wanted to take a wander out to our neighbor's high tunnel and take a look at it this morning. Although it's sunny right now, it was brutally cold last night. I think maybe, hopefully, the last really, really cold night of the season. Although, who knows? It was down to six degrees Fahrenheit last night. Uh, but in the high tunnel, under the low tunnel, we're doing some experiments with some nice uh, early season starting. It did freeze, but I think it only went down to around a few degrees below freezing. But let's take a look. In the last video about this project, I talked about the whole setup, the tubes, the layout. We've added some layers for sure. Uh, some more infrastructure and elements. You can hear something going, which I'll explain in a moment. Uh, but basically this was the setup as of last night and the soil where all the seeds are getting started in there, which we'll take a look at. It had a tiny bit of an ice crust. Certainly if we were starting tomatoes and basil, we would have been in a rough way. But really for the things we're doing right now, which are brassica starts and some hardy perennials, it was fine enough. So it was around 25, 20-ish degrees warmer than uh, the air temperature outside. First thing I should mention is what you're looking at here. Very, In some ways it's technical, but it's pretty simple in its execution. This is a 75 watt solar panel that we've been using for moving water with bilge pumps at the main nursery, but we don't need to use it right now. So it's strung up in a very formalized way. This is OSHA compliant since it has the tape because I bopped my head on that and I bopped my head on that. So now it's completely compliant and safety set. And um, our neighbor had some old extension cord laying around, so I made some extenders, uh, Anderson power pole extenders. And this goes down to a fan. You can hear it. It's a little hard to see. I don't want to take it apart, but let me unplug it. Okay. Um, so this is a four inch ducted bilge fan I found for 22 bucks on eBay that uh, takes uh, six amps at 12 volts. So it's around 70 watts or so. And it's connected directly to the solar panel. So basically it's taking hot air that's rising in this low tunnel. So the hottest air that's forming in here during the day, it's grabbing that air and forcing it down through this tube. All I had was perforated tube, so I just took some greenhouse poly and wrapped that around with some hay twine. And it takes the hot air and forces it down through the tube that's buried at the bottom of this walkway. It sends it all the way down, so it releases all that heat that's from in here down into the soil below and underneath that tank at the far end. And it's pretty scrappy the way this was laid out, but since it's an experiment, I didn't want to get too formalized. But basically on the coldest nights, the poly is able to extend over the tank. Really what I should do is button it up so there's no air gaps. I get that. But basically all day, the sun energy is going directly into the tank, but then also being fed with that airflow from underneath. Now, of course, the next layer with all this is to actually insulate the tank, but I'm just not there yet. But anyway, last night it was six degrees outside. It's thawed out now, and it was thawed out first thing in the morning. So I think the water in here is staying very reliably above freezing. There's some additional layers I'm going to add to this. I plan on setting up a copper coil behind a Fresnel lens in a dark container that can absorb sun energy, heat the water, and send it to the top and circulate water through the PEX. We have a whole PEX circuit laid into here. That additional layer, if that was running actively, I think would have kept this space from freezing at all. But it just isn't there yet. There's only so much you can do in a day. This compost walkway has been performing really well. There's a lot of heat coming off. And since it's bedding from the chicken yard, the nutrient level is pretty darn high. And so I've started adding, this is all charcoal from make, uh, that we make in our wood stove, making biochar in a retort. I'll link to that here if you're interested in seeing. So basically there's a charcoal filter on top, very informally laid out. And what I think we need to do is bury this with a bunch of deep uh, dry leaves to just absorb a little bit more nutrient and aroma. But the idea of having the poly over the pathway on the coldest nights really seems to translate to the heat that's radiating upward going into here and sticking around instead of leaving into this general space and 
escaping. So it focuses the heat where we need it. Let's take a look underneath. So there might be some more elegant ways to work with the poly, but for now it works just fine to slide it up on top. I can bring the other side up. And so on days where it's um, sunny, but very, very cold, we can leave this down and the fan can work to send the excess heat down into the earth to charge for the evening. And then on warmer days, I figure we can just roll the poly all the way up and let it breathe. And so what we're doing in here is getting in motion. I don't think anything's up just yet. This all happened just a few days ago, but we worked up the soil, uh, loosened the soil a bit, got it covered in some nice uh, seed mix and went through and are doing communal starts of a whole wide range. So there's potato onions. So this will ultimately be for food uh, resilience for us, as well as maybe nursery stock, wild licorice for nursery stock, scur it. I'd like to be able to offer that at some point. We've got a ton of seeds, so we're getting those started too. But the idea is basically they were sown in here very, very thickly, hydrated very deeply, and then covered with a little bit of uh, finished compost mix, seed starting mix. And so they can grow communally, which give them a lot of resilience and also be very, very efficient in how it uses the space in here. Um, so basically down this whole line, there might be 10 or 20,000 little seedling plants. And since they're all in one big communal block of soil, it's easier to keep up with their watering needs. And there's a little bit more thermal buffering in having them all together rather than in flats and in little seed starting trays where they certainly would endure some extreme cold if it got cold. Juan went through the other day and seeded out a whole bunch of seeds that he had collected. There's some non-heading broccoli, some oak leaf lettuce, some mustard from a friend of his. And so just like with a lot of the patterns of our gardens, this lives at the intersection between uh, nursery desires, uh, home food resilience interests, and annuals and things for, beauti uh, for beauty as well. But there's all sorts of cold hardy starts happening, different varieties of kale and lettuce and chard, cilantro, um, cilantrio, <laughs> some cumin. So we'll see. Uh, and I didn't expect anything to be up to show you folks today. There's certainly some little weeds. These are little brassica starts that are almost certainly from a wild mustard. But as things go along, we can keep an eye out for the plants we care about and pluck out the other little ones. I fully anticipate having to do a fair bit of that. This little funky setup in here is hiding this tiny device I invested in a bunch of years ago. Um, not, not recommending them or, you know, against them either. This is a thing called Sensor Push. I got this that uh, uses Bluetooth and it rec it's a data logger for both temperature and humidity. And so we set this up I put them, I put this specifically on these um, insulated fire bricks so that it's not in direct sunlight and it's not in contact with the earth, but it's sharing the common airspace and the common humidity in here. So I think it's a decently accurate representation of what's happening at the soil level, especially at night when there's no sun energy going into the rest of the soil. Uh, and so far, the only moments that it's been below freezing in here was last night for about an hour or so. I'll see if I, or two, maybe two or three hours, but just a few degrees below freezing. It was certainly about 20 degrees warmer than outside underneath this space. Uh, I'll grab some screenshots of the data from that and share them here if you're interested. We transplanted out a whole lot of spinaches and kales and lettuce and mustards that were growing in random spots in this high tunnel. I uh, got them all consolidated into one bed over here and got them really thoroughly hydrated the other day. The beds now are very deeply soaked. It was cold, but uh, digging through the ice on the pond, running the solar panel and just flood irrigating everything felt pretty important to wake the soil back up. And so now I can trust that this deep soil with a good mulch should be holding water nicely. You might only have to water every handful of days at this point. Um, but these should be perking up and starting to grow so that we can start eating from here pretty soon. And we'll continue on with sowing more communal seed starts all throughout here. And the moment that these are ready to be lifted, we can li dig them up, move them along either to nursery beds or to production beds for all these different spring greens or um, 
nursery stock, perennial nursery stock to move out and replace them with the next round, which will be crops more like our hot peppers, our tomatoes, our basil, husk cherries, plants that like a lot more heat as the next week or two things warm up. So yeah, that's the next layer with all this, the solar, very simple solar panel set up to a fan, taking the hottest air from in that tunnel and sending it down through the floor and under the tank. Um, the poly over where it can be either up by day or down or down and across the pathway to absorb the heat that's been banked in there from the compost and the hot air, have that circulate back into that space. And then the next layer will be figuring out this PEC circuit that's run underneath all this and that runs in the walkways between these beds to be paired up with a solar heat accumulator that can transfer into that tank. Ideally, we get that tank up to 70 or 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and use that for our watering rather than this, which goes directly to the pond, which is very, very brisk for little baby seedlings. So yeah, for now, I'll put the poly back down. You can hear I plug the fan back in to the solar panel. I love the simplicity of this where it's pitched a little towards the morning, so it kicks on in the morning, but by late day, it's pitched a little bit away. It's facing a little east, so the late day sun uh, the fan won't run as much and the heat can charge in there a bit more. But on these colder days, it feels nice to be able to accumulate a lot more heat in the soil to help wake up the seeds and charge the thermal battery of that earth. I'll leave it here for now. Let me know if you've got some questions or comments or suggestions and we'll take it from there and I'll share some updates in the next video. Thanks for watching.